now that we have our ui part completed let's make the app react to the actions of the user in our case when the user taps the floating action button we expect the counter text on the screen to increase its value with every tap this means that our app needs to have some form of state which would check when the button was tapped and would then notify the counter to change its value right now the state of the app says that the counter's value is 0 every time we tap we want the state of the app to say that the value of the counter increased by 1 since the floating action button is responsible for invoking this change in state and the text widget is the one that would get updated they should be inside a stateful widget so that they can change the state or react to the changing state hence it makes sense to move both of these out into a separate widget that would be stateful and not stateless therefore Let's create a new class called my home page that would be a stateful widget so that it can have some state which would help us change the counter's value and react to it. As soon as we create this widget, the IDE tells us that our home page class is missing the implementation of a method. This method is the create state method. Let's go ahead and use the shortcut menu to help us use this method. Doing this gives us the structure of a semi-implemented create state method which returns null. Our job now is to complete this create state method. To learn more about this, let's dive into the declaration of the stateful widget. The stateful widget is an abstract class that extends the widget class as its parent. On navigating to its docs, we see that the stateful widget is a widget that has mutable state or in simpler terms, a widget that has state which can change. The widget describes a part of the user interface that can change dynamically which in our case is the text widget which is supposed to change on the tap of the floating action button it is important to note that a stateful widget instance which in our case is the my home page widget should be immutable the mutable part that is the state could be another object that is created by the create state method that we were forced to override previously the create state method would create the associated mutable state for our immutable my home page widget hence the return type of this create method is state let's implement our state object now this would be a new class called my home page state that would extend the state class while denoting the stateful widget that this state belongs to once again we are notified that our newly created class is missing the implementation of a method in this case this method is the build method which is similar to the build method of a stateless widget class that we have discussed in an earlier lesson This build method should contain the widgets that can change the state or react to a changed state. In our case, the floating action button changes the state and the text widget should react to this changed state by updating its text. Hence, we move the entire scaffold that contains both of these widgets outside the stateless my app class to the my home page state class. then modify the create state method inside the stateful widget to return the newly created my home page state instead of null finally to bring all the pieces together provide the my home page widget to the home argument of the material app widget notice that we provide my home page in the home argument of our material app 
and not my home page state directly. This is because the home argument takes in a widget and not a state. So we pass our stateful widget here, which in turn creates the state inside its create state method. To confirm that the changes that we made still work, let's update the text widget and use hot reload to see the changes.